Wine Show. I'm Tamara Lackey, and with me today is Hubert Davis. Hi, how are you? I Good, like how are this. you? <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> Ta-da! Hubert Davis is a college basketball analyst for ESPN, otherwise known as the Eastern Sports Network, not the Entertainment Sports Network, like I thought. And he works six months out of the year and has six months off to spend with his super mega hot wife, Leslie, and their three adorable children. Prior to this, he spent 12 years in the NBA. Yes. First round draft pick for the New York Knicks. Mm -hmm. Because you were super awesome. No. no. Um, went to the New York Knicks for four years, then I played one year with the Toronto Raptors. Yes. Which was awesome. Then I spent four years with the Dallas Mavericks. Then I got traded and spent two years with the Washington Wizards. Played with Michael Jordan with the Washington uh, Wizards for one year. Uh, that was awesome. Then I got traded again, spent two years with the Detroit Pistons, where my wife, that's the first time my wife said she wanted me to be traded with all the snow to that we had. Of, yeah. To get out all of right, Detroit. Right. Then we went to New Jersey, and that was my last year, and I retired in 2004. So I've seen you um, go out and do the college game day and yeah. all that sort of thing. Um, from the outside, it looks really glamorous. Just all that coverage and everywhere yeah. you go and all that sort of thing. Uh, what do you feel like the day-to-day -day thing is behind the scenes? What's the experience like for you? Well, I, you know, in terms of the glamorous part, I, I really don't look at it from that standpoint. I love basketball. I've been passionate about basketball since I was three years old. So to be able to play it and now still be able to be around it, yeah. it's just really neat. Um, the, the, the fun part for me is just watching these kids play. Um, you see 18, 19-year-old kids develop each year, get better, uh, eventually maybe go into the NBA, going to school, being on campuses. Great thing about it is, is going to different programs and seeing how other programs get it done. Mm -hmm. You know, the way Dean Smith did it is great, but there's other ways to, um, um, to coach kids, to get the best out of them on and off the floor. And going on these campuses, you just really need to see other traditions. Right. And it's been a lot of fun. What is like your, one of your crazier stories? on um, having to get, because you, you end up going a lot of places that are not exactly right off the airport, right? No, I, you know, this year was a very difficult year for me and also my family, there's a lot of traveling. Right. I'll okay. give you a quickly a week thing. Yeah. Uh, Monday I'm up at uh, ESPN in Bristol, Connecticut. So I'll wake up at 4 a.m., mm -hmm. take a 6 a.m. flight up to Hartford, Connecticut, spend all day at ESPN on Monday, get back to my hotel about one o'clock in the morning, take a 6 a.m. flight on Tuesday, fly back home on Tuesday, Unpack, pack, hang out with my wife, hang out with my kids. Wednesday, get up at 4 a.m., 6 a.m. flight I did, announce games in the Big 12. So that's it, the pace the entire time you're That's on. the pace from January all the way through April. And, and you love the sport, you love being there, I you love the passionate, but you still have to do all the hard tie it together stuff, which is all this travel. You, you have to remember all the names, you have to remember the stories of each player. Say I'm doing Kentucky versus um, South Carolina. I've got to know every player on both teams. I've got to know their families. I've got to know their bio. I've got to know their stats. Yeah. And it can relate to so many other things. I mean, you have to have stories. You just can't have stats. You have to have stories on each player. So while you're announcing a game, you're basically just having a conversation. When you left basketball after 12 years and you had a few years before you started with ESPN, you were doing some coaching. It was, yeah. I was doing some coaching. Uh, you know, it was a tough point for me. Um, this was developmental coaching with the Mavericks? With the Dallas Mavericks, and it gave me an opportunity to try something new, to see if I wanted to get into coaching, and also did some television work for Fox Sports, which is uh, located in Dallas. But, you know, it was a really difficult, interesting time for me trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Right. All I had known is basketball, right. and I really didn't know what I was going to do. Um, what else did you consider? Wow, I, you know, I, I, Tamara, I was scared. I didn't, you know, I knew I was good at basketball, but I didn't think I could do anything else. Huh. And I never thought that I would be in this situation. I, you know, give you a quick story. My, my last year with the New Jersey Nets in 2004 uh, was the only year that I sat the bench in any level. Right. And I sat the bench. It was 82 games in a regular season, eight preseason games. I sat the bench the whole year except for one game, and that was game 41. For whatever reason, the coach put me in, played well, got player of the game. Uh, the really? Got player you of the game. You read the whole season, you got player of the game, one game you're playing. One in. game. After that, sat the bench the rest of the season and left off the playoff roster. My career was over. Well, because I got interviewed on radio and television, there was a broadcasting agent in New York City, was getting ready to go to bed, clicked on the uh, local news, saw me give the interview, yeah. thought I spoke okay, yeah. called my basketball agent, called me and begged me to try out for ESPN. Tried out for ESPN and now it's gonna be my seventh year this year. Wow. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Serendipity, that's crazy. It is. So you hadn't thought to yourself, I wanna go into broadcasting. 
specifically? Tamara, that's the last thing I wanted to do. I've been in speech therapy class since elementary school, all throughout high school. Inside the MBA, it's crazy. It is. It's crazy. It is. Like in terms of just the lifestyle and the madness and everything. You are really grounded. You've always been really grounded, but you had to make some decisions on how you were going to be as a player in the NBA in terms of your relationship with your wife, which is a very close relationship, yeah. um, and then eventually your family. What was that experience like from the inside? Well, I, you know, in terms of wow, it's, it's, it's nothing like the movies. But it looks so rock starish with like the clubs and the, you know, the awesomeness. You, you, no, you can do that. Yeah. You can. You have to make a decision. You have to make a decision. Wanna, it's yeah. a choice. Yeah. And I made a choice to concentrate on basketball and um, take care of my body. And, you know, there's not many people that get a chance to play in the NBA. Right. So, like any profession, you feel there's probably a sense of entitlement within there, and other people kind of saying, What are you doing? Why don't you appreciate this? I, I agree with you. But, you know, Tamara, it was the, the hardest part for me being in the NBA was how convenient everything was. It's very easy to. Um, I don't want to say get big headed, but I mean, you know, while I was in New York uh, playing for the Knicks, Tommy Hilfinger, uh, Calvin Klein would come to practice, say, Won't you come down to our studio in New York? You go down to his office, and there would be clothes yeah. in their office, your size, and you just go and pick things out. I mean, stuff like that. Yeah. It's just. So, what'd you get? I did get some good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I did get some good stuff. But I like shoes. I'm not really big into clothes. I love shoes. Yeah. Have you said Zappos.com? Zappos.com. Yeah. You love Zappos. I, I just love buying shoes. So when I was little, I got a new pair of shoes, got them dirty that same day. I said to my dad, I need a new pair of shoes. He said, no. He says, you know, until those get worn out, you know, we're not getting you another pair. And he said, when you get older and you get a job, you can buy as many shoes as you want. I took it and I ran with it. And now I have a job. And I, I, I love shoes. I order on Zappos a pair of shoes once every two weeks. I Shush. Think. I do. I wore a pair of new shoes every game that I played in the NBA. I just love brand new shoes. You said you just started using FaceTime. I did. It's, it's, it's been awesome to be able to connect with the kids. I love, I love to see them. And yeah. so they can see my hotel room, where I'm staying. Yeah. And we just had a really good time with that. But I, sometimes I take the kids. I took my wife with Puerto Rico. I didn't have to drag her to that no, one, San Juan, no. right on the beach. And I brought my oldest son with me to an actual game. I did the- Your nine-year-old. My oh, nine-year-old. Sure. He sat right next to me during the game. Before the game, he worked the camera as I did some interviews prior to the game. Oh, he looks a little bad. So you and Leslie have been together, well, you met at 15, and have been together, obviously, mm. for a long time. four years since then. <laughs> Um, how has your communication patterns changed over time? And I mean that specifically because I know that you put a lot of effort into your relationship and your marriage. And over time, you've, mm. you know, kid, 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 career, travel, etc. How do you keep things uh, close? Well, I mean, it is hard to communicate, um, especially with three kids. Right. Um, when they're up, you cannot have a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot start and finish a sentence. So right, it's three really young children. Three young children, five, seven, and nine. So, I mean, it's really important for us, uh, for my wife and I, uh, to have a, a date night every week. And also, when the kids go to bed, we spend at least an hour, hour and a half before we go to bed just talking about the day and just trying to get caught up. She's the only person, that was one of the reasons why I married her, she's the only person that I've ever wanted to be around every day. And so she's been my best friend since I've been 16 years old, and um, it's been great communicating with her for this for this amount of time. <laughs> I am following my wife, um, and, I, and I'm being honest with you. She has um, the most giving heart that I've ever seen in anybody that I've ever met, and that's a part for me that has developed um, because I, I'm not like that. But I've seen the benefit of relationships. I've seen the benefits of, of helping people and, and being in, in someone's life and communicating. Mm -hmm. And we really enjoy it. We love having kids over from uh, the University of North Carolina. We have college kids over at our house all the time. You're obviously pretty uh, introspective and yeah. you reflect a lot on all this. Where yeah. where is that, is that all just happening in your head? Do you write it down? Do you kind of stop and think about um, you know, I spend a lot of time thinking about what we're doing and, you know, where our family's going. Are we doing the right thing with the kids? Uh, but that I don't journal. Um, I don't blog. Um, I just love spending time with my family. You know, Tamara, I, uh, unfortunately for me, I lost my mom when I was 16. Mm -hmm. um, she was my best friend. So at 15 years old in January of 1986, she was diagnosed with cancer. And in August 31st, she died. So for me, um, 
I, at an early age, I understood that, you know, sometimes, you know, you, it's not guaranteed that my wife and I are going to live till 80, see our kids until they have kids, and everything doesn't go according to plan. And so um, I just want to soak up every day. And sometimes that's bad because the kids will ask me to play, and I was like, yes, every time. Because I don't know if this is my last day, and I don't want to have any regrets, and I just want to enjoy my family. And we had a great family when I grew up. It was me and my sister, six years younger, my mom and dad. It was kind of like the Brady Bunch. Yeah. And in and, and one second, it all got thrown away. Right. And so the time that we have, my wife and I and our three kids, let's enjoy it right now because we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And if you do live to 80, then you're only at halftime now. You're not in the third quarter anymore. I am in third quarter. I'm 41. That's third quarter. No, that's the, in the halftime break. That's the that's show. That's third quarter. That's the cheerleaders. That's third quarter. No, no, no. You're sitting out there getting the pep talk. That's where you are right now. Okay, well, they're fine, but there's no timeouts. In summary, for everybody watching yes. who is pursuing their passion or doing work they love and trying to figure out how to do it with everything else, yeah. what are some <laughs> suggestions, maybe three suggestions Three. Three suggestions okay. that you would offer people about um, ways that they can better incorporate work they love with the rest of their life and still maintain sanity. Say no. Say no. Say no. I think that's the the um, that's something that I've gotten better with every year. Okay. Saying no, you can't do everything. Right. It can be done um, in terms of you know family, work, uh, my faith. Um, that's a great question. How do you do it? How do I do it all? Yeah. Um, oh, I see what you're doing. I see what you're, you're kind of bringing it back. A little bit. Um, I think actually what I've discovered yeah. is putting more structure in my life. And, I, and I'm somebody who I am an organized structure. person. Yes. I'm very organized. Okay, so uh, third. What's one third tip that you would give? Third and final. Um, probably do something that you're passionate about. You know, when you talk about how do I fit in family, faith, and work, and that's a hard question for me to answer because I, I, that's not hard for me to fit in because I'm passionate about yeah. my family, yeah. I'm passionate about my faith, and I'm passionate about my work. You have to love it. You love photography. You love it. It's not yeah. work to you, okay? You love your family. It's not work to you. <laughs> so if you love it, you're fine with it. Thank you, Hubert, for joining us. No, thanks for having me. This is really great. I appreciate it, genuinely. No, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for joining us today on Redefine, where we talk to people who do work they love and explore the innovative methods they use to bring everything together. Mm -hmm.